All right, we'll see you on April 3rd for your jury trial. Thanks for dressing appropriately for court, even though you're on crutches because you've been shot. Thanks. You're welcome. So the person I have before me has not followed the court's rule, and I specifically said she used to remain in Bear County. She doesn't have stable housing. She and her boyfriend slash paramour slash fiance slash father of her children are moving from place to place with these children. The CPS worker is not doing adequate, adequate supervision or either they're coming in and doing spot checks and their spot checks is, oh, children are running around, they seem okay, they don't have any bruises. Then I'm being told now that there's some new allegation that a child may have been sexually abused. And the last time we were here, I think she had children that are under the age of five. She has a newborn who's testing positive for marijuana. That's not good. Hello. All right. And uh, we have. CSO Sorolo, is that the? That's the probation officer, Your Honor. All right, and are we still waiting for a CPS worker? Um, Ms. Loper is here, and Ms. Uh, Flores on the screen. All right, thank you. All right, we're going to go on the record. Court is calling 2022-CR0841C, State of Texas versus Kayla Connor. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Michael for the defense. David Blair. And are you Kayla Connor? All right. So everyone, please whisper. And I'm going to need everyone to speak up so I can hear because my allergies are acting up a little bit today. Uh, so the reason we are here, uh, it's a compliance, and I guess it's a request from your client uh, to live somewhere other than Bear County. And I ask that certain people be present today. And I've requested that the CPS workers be present. And my understanding probation is uh, present. So would anyone like to call a witness with regards to her living somewhere other than San Antonio? Or am I gonna call witnesses? All right. We'll call, yes. I apologize. Just so that you're aware, the one that's the CPS worker on Zoom is in Travis County. The one here in court is from Bear County. All right, so who needs to leave first? Because I know that I received a message. Uh, San Antonio. All right, uh, could the San Antonio caseworker please come forward? Hello. Hello. All right, could you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. All right, you can lower your hand if you can state your name for the record. Amy Loper. All right, and what is your relationship to Kayla Connor? I was the family-based worker for her until about October, so beginning of October. All right, and can you tell the court whether or not you were aware while you were the family-based worker? that Ms. Connor left uh, Bear County and left San Antonio to live elsewhere? So she did not tell me when she actually left. Um, I did know that her paramour had a job opportunity in Austin um, and just asked them to let me know where they go so I could get a worker in that area that could work with them. All right, so she didn't request permission to leave? Um, she, I was aware. Yes, I was aware. That no, my question is, did she request permission to leave? No, we don't require that. Okay. Were you aware that she was using marijuana? I was when the her probation officer contacted me. All right. So you were aware after this court asked her if she was going to be positive for drugs. That's yes. the only time you were aware? Uh, the beginning of October is when I heard from her probation officer. So I visited with her the first week of October to discuss that. And while you had her in the family-based services program, how often were you in contact with her? Um, typically once or twice a month. All right. And have you had any contact? And I know CPS workers calls them paramours, but I'm assuming that's her boyfriend yes. slash fiance. Um, have you had any contact with him? Phone contact only since October, but yes, I was visiting him as well. All right. 
did you do any research into his background? Um, we did have his, um, we do criminal background checks and yeah, background checks. All right, and did you do that? Uh, that was done during the investigation. And were there any issues with regards to his background? Not that I can recall. No. Did you ever visit the uh, place where she was moving? I have not, the worker in Travis County. All right. Was that place reviewed before she moved there? No. Were you aware that she had to get permission from this court to leave Bear County? I was. And did you make her aware of that? Um, I asked her if she had asked permission and she said she was waiting to hear back. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for this witness? So, no, you, may I? Yes. So, uh, Ms. Loker, yes. um, do you have had contact with uh, Kayla since October? Or Only by phone. By phone, mm -hmm. and you yes. discussed with- Okay, just this? one second. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to ask you guys to step back on my right. Yeah, I'm gonna have to ask you guys to step back because we're on the record. And you mostly discussed what her living arrangement Yes, was. just trying to figure out what worker needed to be in contact with Did you see anything that uh, might have led you to believe that she shouldn't move or that could move or that she did have any no, on that? No, no, because he was looking for work for months prior. And so the fact that he could provide for the family. But, but he did find a job. Yes. And were you, what kind of job? You At know Tesla. This one? Mm -hmm. in, in what city? In Austin. Austin. Okay. Um, I'll pass. That's the way When, I, I just trying to figure out dates wise, when uh, did she uh, get assigned a new case for her? What case for her in Austin? That would have been after I spoke with Ms. Abrams and she let me know that she had moved. I filed the um, transfer paperwork right away. And I want to say she went out probably two or three days later. So first, second week of November. Okay. So as of that time, is that that's when it would have she would not have been on your case load anymore? Right. Okay. Um, and prior to that, had we tested positive for marijuana? She did not for me. The only the first time I heard of it was the probation officer beginning of October. Okay. Uh, and how often were was she being tested? Um she was tested. I'm not, I don't have it on me. I'm sorry. Um, it's random. So it's not a specified amount of time, but I know she was scheduled to finish her outpatient treatment the end of, no, end of September. So then we would have tested her after she completed. But then I, by then I had heard from you. Were you aware that she was pregnant? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so knowing that, that doesn't change CPS's uh, requirements about testing her or anything like that? Um, no. No? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll pass the yeah, question. Yes. Very briefly. Um, so you made visits uh, yeah. before COVID, and yes. you saw the children and everything. And did they seem to be adequately taken care of? Yes. So you had no problem. Yes. Yes, they did. So you really didn't have any issues with that? No, I did That's what I mean. How many times had, had you tested her during the family-based services? I don't have it in front of me. I want to say two times. Two times? Two months. All right. And how many months did you have her? Um, I, I want to say in April or May. Okay. Uh, but I, we typically don't test until they're well into services because we wouldn't expect anything to have changed if she hasn't gotten any service. So how many months did you have her in family-based services? Three or four months. Three or four months. In that three or four months, you may have tested her approximately twice. All right. And with family-based services, as part of that you're expecting the person who's in the services to be honest with you. Yes. All right. So did Ms. Connor ever come to you and tell you that she had used? She did not. All right. Any other questions? None at this time. No. All right. Is this witness excused? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, officer. 
I'm sorry, CPS caseworker Perez. Your Honor, Flor Perez Chavez. Yes. Thank you. All right. Does anybody have any question to these two witnesses appearing by Zoom? Uh, Ms. Perez is actually in the location where Ms. Connor is looking to look, uh, move. Your Honor. Um, yes, one uh, moment, please. Any objections? No objections. All right. Ms. Perez, can you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you, God? Yes. All right. You can lower your hand if you'll state your name for the record. Flor Perez Chavez, FBSS caseworker in Travis County. All right. Either party want to question this witness? I, I can go. Um, is it Ms. Chavez or Ms. Perez Chavez? Perez Chavez, correct. Ms. Perez Chavez, when was Ms. Connor placed onto your caseload? I received the courtesy request on November 8th, and I made a call to Ms. Connor asking her her home address, and I made the visit on November 9th. Okay. So you actually visited the home on November 9th? Yes, she was in uh, Riverside uh, um, that time in Travis County, yes. Okay, um, and has she remained on your caseload since then? She has remained on my caseload. However, I did receive an email shortly after my visit that she was ordered to return mm -hmm. and that I was I, basically that I was not gonna need to see her again. Okay. So when you received that email that she was ordered to remain in Bear County, uh, did you have that conversation with her as well that she needed to return to Bear County? No, I received an email from her primary caseworker just to my supervisor and me let me know that I no longer needed to go visit her. Okay, so are you aware of anybody who had conversations with um, Ms. Connor about the need from no. CPS? that she needed to return to San Antonio. I was not aware that she of any of that. As far as CPS is concerned, is it important for your investigation and your supervision um, that she be in compliance with any court orders, especially as it relates to criminal cases? Yes. Okay. Um, and so if she was in Austin, would it be fair to say that she was not in compliance with the court's orders? Yes, I'm assuming, yes. Okay. When she was on your caseload, did you ever test her um, for uh, like your analysis for any type of, of drug use? I took with me an oral swab drug test. I offered it. Um, she, Ms. Connor stated that uh, she was drug testing with probation and to refer to probation. Okay. So at that point, she didn't want to test. Um, using the oral swab. No, I took it with me. Okay. Um, is that concerning for CPS when somebody refuses to uh, submit to any type of drug testing? Yes, it can be concerning. Yes. Was it concerning in this case? Yes, I believe I called her the following day addressing um, drug use, and she stated that she had used. Um, some legal vape pen that they sell at gas stations, and then she didn't know that that was going to cause her to pop dirty. Okay. Uh, at that point, did you know that she was pregnant? Yes. Okay. Um, so besides the one attempt to drug test her um, and the one uh, field visit to her location, which I believe you stated was on Riverside, did you have any other in-person contact with Ms. Connor? I did. I got an email um, at the beginning of December from uh, Ms. Amy Lopper, the other caseworker, stating that Ms. Connor had not returned and that I needed to go see her again. By this time, I realized she was now in another county, in Hayes County, which is now Buda. I still went over there from Travis County to go visit them to make sure that, you know, they were there. Okay. And so at that point, were you successful in making contact her, with her in Buda? Yes. Okay. Um, and did you discuss with her ever that, essentially, why are you still living not in Bear County when the court has ordered you to be in Bear County? Yeah, she, she continued to say that she was working with her probation officer and she was in communicating. Um, she made it appear that she was in compliance. Okay. So... 
at that point, she told you that she was aware that she was supposed to be in Bear County, but that she was working with her probation officer. Correct. I understand that correctly. Um, did you talk with her probation officer specifically about those issues? I did not. I did. I called the caseworker. Okay. Um, other than the, after this last time you made contact with her in Buda, um, did you ever have any other in-person contact with her? I did. I saw her on the yesterday. Yesterday, I went over to her place again. And she um, agreed to a parenting course and she agreed to an oral swab test. Okay. And did you do the oral swab test? Yes. And what was the results? Um, they were sent out to the lab yesterday. Okay. Um, when do you expect you might have results on this? Um, within seven days. Okay. Um, and was she still residing in Buda at that point? Yes. At the same location you visited her before? Uh, yes. Okay. Did you ever, um, I'm assuming you haven't seen her today, right? No. In person. Did you have any other um, phone contact with, with Ms. Connor? Um, a few other calls during this December. Um, and um, that, that's, that uh, my other contacts were regarding uh, an, another investigation case that was going on that, they were calling me and things like that. But um, yeah, that that's about it. Okay. What were the nature of the phone calls about? See if she was still there. I think just making visits. Okay. You said that she was, I guess, subject to another investigation with CPS? Correct. What is the status of that case? I, um, I am not aware of the status of that case yet. Okay. What? Well, what was the nature of why she is, I guess, subject to the, another investigation with CPS? From my understanding, another intake came in shortly after I made my first visit in December uh, regarding Ms. Connor and uh, abuse allegations from another county in Corpus. Okay. And so do you know if that case is still pending and still under investigation with CPS? I am... Uh, I'm not sure what the case is uh, status as of now. Okay. Um, are you aware uh, that she uh, gave birth to a child on December twelfth? Yes, I visited. Uh, I visited exactly shortly after uh, she was released from the hospital to go see the baby. Okay. And did you make contact with her at the hospital? No, I did not. Um, was she at the hospital then? Um, I, from my understanding, investigations was making contact with her at the hospital. Okay. Were you aware that her child was born positive to THC with THC? Yes, that is also part of the uh, another intake that came in. Okay. So there's two additional intakes that have come in since she's been placed on probation. Is that, is that fair to say? The, yes, that would be fair to say. It's time I'll pass the witness judge. Defense. Sure. Yes, ma'am. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, just speak up a little bit. Okay. Um, did you have any contact with the paramour when you were supervising? Um, yes. Um, yeah, and actually, on my visits, uh, Mr. Treadwell was there. Okay. Um, and they did they give you any indication on how on their relationship? They were they were definitely a couple. They're living together and all that. Yes, he seemed very supportive um, there with the children, the father of the kids, holding them. Um, he, again, um, spoke in her defense saying that, you know, she was going to test through probation. She was following probation and she was complying there. So um, he had no concerns regarding her caring for the children. Were you aware of his uh, employment status at that time? When I first met him, he told me that they wanted the case to remain in San Antonio because of there were services that they were doing that she would, Miss Connor was doing there, but he had to move because of his job. He got a job at Tesla at the Giga factory. And um, that is the reason why they ended up moving. 
Um, now, the contact that you had with Ms. Connor and the children, the children, how were they? Did they seem adequately taken care of? Yes, they were running around. Yes, they're very playful. I never saw any bruises or marks on them or them crying or anything like that. I'll pass away. Any further questions? Uh, just one further question. Uh, are you aware that Ms. Connor is on probation for injury to a child? Yes, um, I, um, I became aware of that um, when we had a staffing. That's not the exact charge. The exact charge is by omission. Right. It's injury to a child by omission. Are you aware of that? No, not the full details, no. Uh, I have no further questions. Any other questions? No, yeah. All right, so did you verify uh, her boyfriend's paramour slash fiance's employment? I have not, Your Honor. And they were in Travis, then they moved to Buda. Is that what I'm hearing? Correct. Correct. And where are they staying? Are they staying in a place that they're leasing? From my understanding, it's a month to month lease. Okay. And does CPS think that is appropriate for children to be in a place for a month to month lease? I was told that they are waiting to get the case transferred and approved before they would sign up for a uh, full lease. Mm -hmm. So since she's had these children, how many moves have they made? From Austin to Buda to. All right. And with regards to these sexual abuse allegations, I know you can't go in to them in great detail, but who is the alleged victim? of the abuse is it's it a, a child correct your honor and is there an allegation of who the perpetrator is correct yes and who would that perpetrator allegedly be is it someone that she knows yes is it someone that she alleged is alleged to have lived with yes do you not find it concerning to have her in a place that they only have been in or are living in from month to month? There are allegations of a child texting positive for marijuana at birth, an allegation of sex abuse against one of the children. Do you find that concerning? When um, when the intake came in, investigations was working on placing a safety plan. Um, we were following, I was in the process of following with the safety plan, asking them if we can get someone to supervise. We have been trying um, with investigations, but I there has not been one in place yet. All right. Thank you. Are there any more questions for this witness? All right. Uh, is she excused? Yes, sir. All right. Ms. Pettis, you can be excused or, or either you can remain on to see what the court's ruling is going to be with regards to whether or not Ms. Uh, Connor can transfer. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone like to call probation? Uh, Judge, just say we'll call probation. All right. Could you unmute yourself, please? Would you raise your right hand for me? Do yes. You swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth. So help you God. Yes, dear honor. All right. If you could state your name for the record. My name is Sylvia Cirilla. All right. Does anyone have any objection to this witness testifying by Zoom defense? No objection. State? No, Your Honor. All right. You may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Ms. Cirilla, are you, are you Ms. Connor's current uh, uh, pre I'm not sorry, pre trials supervision. Community supervision officer? Yes, that is correct, sir. And how long has she been on your caseload? She has been on my caseload since she was granted, which was August the 25th of 2022, sir. Okay. Um, so you're aware that the court ordered her to remain in Bear County, correct? That is correct. And I want to talk about how many times you've had that conversation with. Ms. Connor, do you know how many times you've told her that she needed to remain in Bear County? Yes, sir. I told her when I went over her conditions initially in September at our first visit, 
So I went over all her conditions. I explained everything that she needed to do. She said that she was aware of and understood exactly what she needed to do while on probation. And then also I told her about maybe three weeks um, before or about three to four weeks before she moved out of the county. She came to an office visit and she stated that she might be moving. And she told me that her boyfriend was possibly going to get a job. He had gone to an interview, possibly going to get a job in Austin with Tesla and they would have to move. At that point, I advised her of her conditions. I advised her she is not allowed to move unless the judge gave her permission. So I explained how the judge could get, would give her permission. I said, we, I got to submit a document. We address the facts and it would be up to the judge to allow you to move. You cannot just leave the county. And she said, well, I'm going to be homeless. And I said, well, um, Miss Connor, a lot of people commute from Bear County to Travis County every day on a daily basis. They work there, but they live here. So if, you're, if your boyfriend gets a job there, that would be what would need to happen. So you, because you need to stay here. And she said, no, because he's not going to be able to pay two different rents. So she said, he can't pay rent for me here and pay rent in Austin. And I said, well, then in that case, he would have to commute. I said, because you are not allowed to leave the county. You have field visits three times a month and you are not allowed to move without the judge's permission. Um, she didn't tell me that she moved. I found out on my own that she moved because I had called the CPS worker and I um, I notified the CPS worker that she had moved. We found out um, that she had moved after she had been there already like three weeks, I believe. And do you know approximately when that was? Mm, I would have to look at my notes, sir, on in her file. Um, but she was already living there when she went to her first compliance hearing with the judge. Okay. And on that day, I told her, um, you know, you need to come, you need to come back the last office visit we had. Right. And so I so told her you can address that with the judge. Does November 14th of 2022 sound correct when she had her last court date when she also tested positive for marijuana in court? Yes, that is correct. That's the last day that she tested positive. Yes, sir. So you, and I, uh -huh. So you spoke with her on November 14th of 2022, letting her know that she needed to be in Bear County. Yeah, she's known that she needed to be in Bear County. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and so um, you've also spoke to her, is it fair to say, on November 15th of 2022, the next day, um, when you called to inquire about her plans to move back to San Antonio. Yes, that is correct, sir. I have been in contact with her and I had been asking her, what are your plans? Have you been looking for a place to stay? And she, she stated that she has not because her boyfriend rented an Airbnb for a month and she couldn't come back. And I told her, Yes, but you were in court that morning and the judge told you you needed to come back to Bear County. Her boyfriend, according to some of the emails that she sent me, um, her boyfriend rented that Airbnb, one of those apartments um, in the afternoon at three something in the afternoon. But she had been in court that morning. Okay. So from, from what I understand, she sent you some emails that documented on November 14th. Um, November 16th, uh, that, and November 16th that she had rented rooms uh, to stay in, which would have been after her compliance hearing in court on November 14th of 2022. That is correct, sir. Yes. Okay. Um, at that point, did you give her uh, a deadline, essentially, of when she needed to be back residing in San Antonio or in Bear County? 
Yes, sir. I advised her. She's like, oh, what I didn't know, the judge didn't say, but she stated this to me right after court. She said, the judge didn't tell me how long I had to come back. She goes, she didn't give me a deadline. And so I told her, well, you need to get back as soon as you can. So I told her, well, you know what? You have until the end of the month. Oh, I can't do that. So I said, okay, well, you have until December. I think I gave her the first Friday of December. I think it was either December the 2nd or December the 3rd, one of those. It's in my notes. And I told her, you need to be back in the county by then. Okay. Um, so uh, after that, did uh, she, uh, from my understanding, she came to a, a in-person office visit with you on the 28th of November. And at that point, she was still residing in Austin, correct? That is, that is correct, sir. Yes. Okay. Uh-huh. And, and I then, also, I'm sorry, sir. Go, go ahead. ahead. No, and I, on that day, I also addressed to her because I know that she was, you know, testing positive and I know that she was still using and she still was pregnant. And I went over and discussed, did she understand what... um THC, those vape pens, the Delta 8s due to an unborn child. And I read exactly to her what the FDA states happens to a unborn child with a parent who is uh, consuming the Delta 8s. And she said, well, I have anxiety and I can't deal with everything. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so at, at that point, uh, is it your understanding that she was still not going to be testing clean for marijuana or THC? Yes, that is correct, sir. Because she said that she had uh, smoked some Delta 8s. Yes. And then I'm seeing on, um, she was tested for levels um, for a sample that was submitted on 11, uh, November 28th. And that came positive, came back positive for THC. That is correct, sir. And I also asked her to confirm one of the urine samples to see if it was the Delta 8s or the THC. And according to the lab, it was confirmed THC. Okay. Um, and then are you aware of when she gave birth on December 12th of 2022? Yes, sir. She had an appointment with me, but she wasn't able to make that appointment. She was en route when she gave, went into labor and, and gave birth to her child. Yes, sir. Okay. And are you aware of where that child was born? That child was born in Bear County, sir. Okay. Um, would it surprise you to know that the other, uh, the CPS worker just testified, she said she went to the hospital in Austin and that's where the child was born? Mm, she sent me documentation. I asked her where she was at. She said, I'm in Bear County. And she sent me a discharge order. Let me pull that up in my notes. And it says North Central Baptist Hospital. And it says 520 Madison Oak Drive, San Antonio, Texas. Okay. So that the documentation that she sent you shows that she actually gave birth to the child in, in Bear County. Yes. Okay. Um, as of today, which is Jan January 12th of 2023, where is it that to your understanding that Ms. Connor is residing? My understanding is that she is still living in Buda, Texas. Okay. And has she sent you any documentation to show her efforts to move back to Bear County to be in compliance with this court? No, sir. Um, has she ever stated why um, she is unable or unwilling to move back to Bear County uh, per this court's order? She just states that she can't find a place. Okay. Uh, You've been a community supervision officer for how long? 19 years, sir. Okay. So 
it's probably fair to say that you've helped or have seen plenty of people on probation move within Bear County. Yes, that is correct, sir. Okay. Um, is this an unusual case, or I should say, is it your understanding that it's really that hard to find a place in Bear County to live? No, sir. Um, I have people that uh, move from other counties because it's easier uh, to be in this county to report. Um, so they just rather move from Comal or Guadalupe and just move into Bear. So um, this is a big city and it's not that hard to find somewhere to live. Uh, at this point, Judge, I'll pass the witness. Uh, thank you. Oh. Yes, ma'am, could you uh, kind of go over the procedure again to um, move out of county? We were talking about some form that you, that you fill out. Um, does that work? I'm sorry, sir. What was the question again? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. He, he wants to know uh, what is the form that's needed to move to another county? And the procedure generally when someone wants to move. Okay, well, the procedure is that they tell us, they give us proof of where they want to live, why they want to move, who are they going to be living with, and they give us all the details. And then we notify the judge and we ask the judge, judge, these are the circumstances. Will you allow this person to transfer to X county or X state or whatever the issue is? We submit that to the judge and it's the judge's decision to allow a transfer or not. In this form, it says, I guess is a directive, is that correct? Once the judge gives us permission, then we go ahead and we send the person to, we make an appointment with the out-of-county officers and they are to stay here into the out-of-county, they see a non-county officer. That officer then gives them a temporary travel pass until they are accepted to be supervised in the county that they're moving into. And uh, this form was it was never filled out or never submitted to the judge or anything? No, this form was not submitted because she did not uh, give me any of the information. She just moved without my permission. Well, without the judge's permission, I never notified the judge because she never gave me uh, an address, a specific date that she wanted to move there. Um, the boyfriend, his job was still pending. She's like, I don't know if he's gonna get hired or not, but it seems like he will. Um, so it wasn't a for sure thing when I talked to her between that visit and the next time I saw her, she had already moved. And you said you saw her, but she had already moved. Where did you see her? In your office? No, when she came. Yes, sir. So she came to her office visit. She told me that. And she had already, when, by the time I saw her the following month, she had already moved. And you didn't talk anymore about the boyfriend's job or an address, or you didn't ask her for addresses or anything like that? She said she was living in a hotel. At first, when they moved, they were living in hotels, different hotels. So they were jumping around from hotel to hotel to, you know, from one place to another to another. And then they got, I notified the judge. The judge said a compliance hearing. And then after the compliance hearing, she went back to Austin. And I think she stayed, um, she was staying at one little place for a short time until her husband got that Airbnb for a month. That's what we missed. Any other questions? Nothing for the state. All right. Is this witness excused? Uh, from the state's perspective, yes. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you so much for coming in. You can remain on if you want to hear the court's ruling. Okay. Thank you, Judge. All right. Any other witnesses? Nothing for the state. Any other witnesses? Just argument. Yeah. All right. So uh, let me tell you both what I'm going to do. Um, I used to do a lot of work with CPS. So I realized CPS workers are overworked. But I realized in this case, there has not been adequate supervision of her with children. This is a criminal court. It's not a CPS court. But part of my job 
at least part of the way I see my job is if someone's before me on probation and they have minor children, I have to protect society and look out for society. In this case, it's minor children. So the person I have before me has not followed the court's rule. We were here on November 14th, and I specifically said she used to remain in Bear County. She doesn't have stable housing. She and her boyfriend slash paramour slash fiance slash father of her children are moving from place to place with these children. The CPS worker is not doing adequate, adequate supervision or either they're coming in and doing spot checks and their spot checks is, oh, children are running around. They seem OK. They don't have any bruises. Then I'm being told now that there's some new allegation that a child may have been sexually abused. And the last time we were here, I think she had children that are under the age of five. She has a newborn who's testing positive for marijuana. And she was here in this court and tested positive for marijuana. And the probate, the CPS case workers didn't even know she was using marijuana. That's not good. And she's not following my rules. This is what I am going to do. You are living in Bear County. Do you understand? You will be in Bear County by January 20th. If you're not here, a motion to revoke will be filed against you. And you're looking up spending a possibility of 10 years in prison. You will be in Bear County. You're going to be supervised by this probation officer. There are going to be regular UAs. I'm going to want those field visits for three times per month. And please tell them to check on the children. You are not to have any males living in your home. That includes your paramour, boyfriend, slash fiance, whoever he may be. I'm shocked that the CPS caseworkers came in here saying that he works for Tesla, but nobody has any proof of that. It appears to me that they didn't make him through, do a service plan. In my experience, when you have children that are involved, any boyfriend slash paramour slash fiance, they're supposed to be doing the service plan as well. They're supposed to be drug tested as well. You're jumping from hotel to hotel, from house to Airbnb. You're going to be in Bear County. And if you're not in Bear County, motion to revoke is going to be filed. You're going to be here by January 20th. And if your fiance slash boyfriend slash paramour loves you, he will rent a B Airbnb here or he will rent you a hotel here, but you will be here. And you are lucky that I am not putting down a no unsupervised contact with children. But since Child Protective Services is involved and they're supposed to be doing their job, you're going to let them know where you're staying. You're going to call that caseworker in Travis County and tell her I am back in Bear County. And you're going to call that Bear County family-based service worker. You're going to tell her I'm back in Bear County. I don't know why they haven't given you a legal case. You should have a legal case because your baby was born positive for drugs. Maybe they're understaffed. So people need to start paying more money so there can be more caseworkers. But your children are not being taken care of well by you. And you are not looking out for them. You're just living your best life and you're disregarding the rules that I've set. If you are not in Bear County by January 20th at 9 a.m. living here, a motion to revoke will be filed. And when that motion to revoke is filed, what's going to end up happening is a warrant will be issued for your arrest. The p police will pick you up wherever they may find you. If you're at an Airbnb in Austin, in Travis County, in Buda, wherever, with just you and your children, the police are going to come there. They're going to pick you up and they're going to call CPS to come pick up your children. And your children are going to be taken into care of CPS and you're going to go to the Bear County Jail. Either you will make bond or you will not. And then we will hear the allegations of you not being where I told you to be. And you're going to be looking at potentially 10 years in prison. Do you understand? And when are you supposed to be back in Bear County? 20. What time? All right. Is there anything else from either side? I think further from the state. All right. And I'm going to want a UA today. When you're tested today, what are the results going to be? Because you are getting a UA today. All right. We're going to do a UA today. Thank you for coming in. And probation, you're excused. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. Oh, here's this.